Hey everybody, pretty short tutorial in this one is it's pretty simple. You just want to find the difference of the solar panel's STC and the estimated low temperature and then multiply that by the result of dividing the temperature coefficient of VOC by negative 100. We then take that number and then multiply it by the solar panel open circuit voltage and then add the open circuit voltage of the solar panel. Then we take the difference of the panel's STC and the estimated low temperature and then multiply that by the result of dividing the temperature coefficient of P max by negative 100. We then want to take that number and then multiply it by the solar panel wattage and then add the solar panel wattage. You multiply both of those numbers by the solar panels in your array and then cross-reference those numbers on this sheet and you'll be pretty much good to go. Easy as that. Okay, cool. Be sure to subscribe. Hey everybody, it's Nate from Explorers.life and in this video I'm going to teach you how to choose the correct size of charge controller for your solar panel array. Now before we get rolling, if you're looking for full wiring diagrams where you don't need to determine the size of charge controller for yourself, I've got a full set of camper van electrical wiring diagrams and parts lists that you can check out and see if they fit your needs. I made these available to you for totally free right up here. Okay, let's learn how to size a charge controller. Now here's a super quick recap of what a solar charge controller actually does. Your solar panels will put out a voltage that is much higher than what is safe to charge your batteries at. The charge controller is wired between your solar panels and your batteries and it regulates that high and variable voltage down to a voltage safe to charge your batteries with. Now for the examples, I'm going to be referring to the Victron Smart Solar brand of charge controllers as I love the capabilities of how these charge controllers actually work, but perhaps more importantly for this particular video, Victron makes it pretty easy to uh, see the max capacity of what the charge controller actually is. The first number here is the maximum amount of incoming voltage from the solar panels that the charge controller can handle. The second number is the maximum amount of output amps the charge controller can produce to charge the batteries. Now I'm going to be diving into some math in this video, but if you stick around for the full video, I've made something for you that's totally free that will make your life much easier. But we'll get to the easy way later. We're gonna do it the hard way first. The first thing you're going to need is the specs of your solar panels. These can usually be found on their product page or simply on a sticker on the back of the panel itself. For this example, I'm going to be using this Mayo 100 watt solar panel with these specs. You'll also need to know how many solar panels you have in your array. And for this example, we're going to also assume that all of your panels are wired in series. Now, if you're thinking critically at this point, you may look at your spec sheet and think, well, I need five of these 100 watt panels in my solar panel array, and I can see that my open circuit voltage is 22.65. I'll just multiply that by five, and the most voltage I can ever expect to see coming from my solar panel array when wired in series should be 113.25 volts. Now that's not really accurate because as temperatures get colder, panels can produce more voltage. That scenario I just gave resulting in 113.25 volts, that's only accurate if the panels are at a temperature of the standard test conditions, which is 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So to figure out what kind of voltage we can expect to see as temperatures start to drop, we need to first estimate the lowest temperatures our panels will ever see. So for us, last winter in British Columbia, the sun peaked over the horizon one morning with a low temperature of negative 43 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 41.6 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna say that's probably pretty much the coldest what we can ever expect to see. And I'll round that down to negative 45 degrees Celsius just to have a little bit of a buffer. Next, we need to plug in some solar panel stats into this formula. We need to find the difference of the solar panel's STC and the estimated low temperature and multiply that by the result of dividing the temperature coefficient of VOC by negative 100. We can then take that number and multiply it by the solar panel open circuit voltage and then add the solar panel open circuit voltage. That will give us the voltage that each panel will produce at that estimated low temperature. We can then multiply that number by the panels in the array and that will give us the maximum amount of voltage we can ever expect from our solar panel array to ever produce. So 10 bonus points to anybody who noticed the math error right there. Order of operations got to me. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. It's more of just an example, and I wanted to clear it up before I got called out on it because I knew it would happen. Next, we need to find out how many output amps we can expect to see coming out of our charge controller to charge our batteries. So we need our panel specs once again. Now you may notice that the max operating current of a solar panel is 5.29 amps. And you figure that you'll just multiply that by five to get the total amps the solar panel array can produce. But don't do that, it's not that simple. Because that 5.29 amps is a result of 100 watts being pushed by 18.9 volts. Now remember, we're not charging our batteries at 18.9 volts. We need the charge controller to regulate the solar panel voltage down to a voltage more conducive to charging the batteries. So let's say something around the 14.4 volt range. This means that if those 100 watts are being pushed at 14.4 volts, the batteries are actually going to charge at 6.94 amps per panel. That's 100 watts divided by 
14.4 volts gives us 6.94 amps. So as you can see, the amount of amps that we have to work with is directly related to the amount of volts that we have to push with. Now, could that mean that lower temperatures can affect the max amp output as well? Absolutely. A 100 watt panel is only a 100 watt panel at its standard testing condition temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. As the panel cools off, it can actually generate much more wattage. Now to find out how much more wattage, we need to use this formula. We need to take the difference of the panel's STC and the estimated low temperature and then multiply that by the result of dividing the temperature coefficient of P max by negative 100. Then we could take that number and multiply it by the solar panel wattage and then add the solar panel wattage. This will tell us how many watts we can expect a panel to produce when the temperature falls to that estimated low temperature we decided on earlier. So now that we've got our max watts, we can then divide that number by 14.4, and then that will tell us how many amps per panel we can expect to see coming out of our charge controller at 14.4 volts. Multiplying that by the number of panels in the array, in our case five, will give us the estimated maximum amperage output from the charge controller that we can use to charge our batteries when we're at that low temperature. Be a good idea to keep that number handy too. Now, onto the actual charge controllers. Like I mentioned earlier, Victron makes it really nice and easy to determine what each charge controller can handle. That first number we wrote down, that number needs to be below this number. That second number we wrote down, that number needs to be below this number. Now Victron has a whole slew of various charge controller sizes to suit whatever size of solar panel array that you've got going on from sizes as small as an input voltage of 75 with an output amperage of 10, all the way up to a huge 250-100 capable of handling a 250 volt input and a 100 amp output. Now if you don't want to go with Victron charge controllers, that's fine, but you will be less cool. Now if you don't want to go with Victron charge controllers, that's fine because this method of finding the max input voltage and max output amperage will be nearly identical for whatever charge controller you decide to use, as long as it's an MPPT charge controller. Now, for the 100% of times that you don't actually want to do all that math, I took it upon myself to actually learn a little bit of coding and some novice JavaScript, and I made you a free calculator that will actually do all of this work for you. Let me show you how it works. You will still need all of the panel specs on the back of that solar panel, but the calculator will do all the heavy lifting for you. There's a link to the calculator in the description or right up here. All you have to do is put your solar panel wattage here, your estimated low temperature in Fahrenheit here, your panel STC here, your solar panel open circuit voltage here, your temperature coefficient of VOC here, your temperature coefficient of Pmax here, and how many panels in series will make up your array here. Once the calculator has all of that data, you'll have the result at the top of the calculator. So for this particular array, it's recommending the Victron Smart Solar MPPT 15060. Now, if you want some more details about the array, I put a few more outputs at the bottom and I'll just let you browse through those because I've also put some descriptions on what they are. And that'll be helpful for if you want to size a non-Victron charge controller or you just want to know more stats about your array. We made it. I'll be adding more features to this calculator over time. So if you've got a feature that you would like to see added to it, let me know in the comments below and I'll see if I can figure it out. I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, me. Wait, can I do that? I'm not really paying myself for this. I've actually opened up some options for personalized support to help you design electrical systems in your camper fan or RV. I've got a private group where I answer questions in much greater detail and in a more timely manner than I can possibly manage on all my public social media accounts or emails. I'm currently offering that private support group, custom wiring diagrams, as well as one-on-one -on -one consulting calls. Now, if you don't need personalized support or you don't want to pay for info, that's totally cool. I still have all kinds of free information about designing solar and electrical setups for RVs and camper vans, and you can browse all that information in the description below. I just wanted to provide a way for those who need extra help to be able to get it from me. Also, since I talked about Victron charge controllers a lot in this video, I wanted to give a special thanks to them. They've really been helping me become the best resource I can possibly be for teaching you guys and gals about DIY mobile solar. Over the past summer, they've given me the awesome opportunity to attend various events on behalf of Victron Energy, literally just to teach people about installing solar power on their camper vans and RVs. It's been pretty great. Thanks for supporting the channel, Victron. But that's all I've got for you in this video. And if it helped you, please give it a thumbs up and share it with somebody who could use it. Leave any questions you've got in the comments below and subscribe if you want to be notified next time I make a video like this one. And I will see you in the next video.